So I think um, it's probably relevant to start the journey with, you know, we all kind of are influenced and shaped by how we're raised. I was uh, born in England in South uh, West London, and um, I moved back to Nigeria. I'm of Nigerian heritage uh, with my parents about um, age nine or thereabouts. So think fourth grade or there, you know, in um, U.S. terms. Um, and I was in Nigeria from then till I finished my first degree. So I came back to the UK at about 21. So I spent a good set of time just, you know, growing up on the African continent in Nigeria, um, you know, um, extremely um, diverse in its own right in terms of tribe, you know, so lots of diversity, even though all of the same color, but tribal differences were were distinct and, you know, there was a lot that went on in that regards, both tribal and religion, actually, if you think about it. And so when I came back to England, which was to continue my studies, and ultimately that led me through a master's, a PhD, and then joining IBM, um, I think I've always just been focused on kind of a journey of learning. I consider myself an academic at heart. And um, like with many things, I think in life, it is about you know grabbing the opportunities that you get and kind of uh, doing the best with them that you can. I think um, I didn't think a lot about race growing up in Nigeria. I thought a lot about other what I would call um, elements of um, should I call it prejudice or separation. As I said, uh, tribe uh, was a relevant one in that context, um, but. In returning to England, obviously, race came to the forefront. And I think you'll hear this from any Black person, you know, the general notion of um, the difference being a minority, kind of that notion of you have to really be the very best at what you do to even get a shot. But I would also argue and contend I did get a shot. And I was, um, I feel, well supported by whomever was giving me the shot, whether it was the time I spent working in academia as a research fellow or my entrance into um, IBM, I felt, you know, I was always given an opportunity to show what I could bring to the table. And so my experience may differ from others in the sense that I actually felt pretty much that in working my way through I always got what I would expect as, you know, good support from my management, um, I could have real career discussions. Um, I had clarity in my mind of the contract. And by that, I mean, um, what was the job? What did I need to get done? How did I need to perform? And equating, you know, therefore my rewards with that. And um, I learned how to have very, very direct conversations, right? As a professional, as a working professional, driving for what I expected. And I felt, you know, I was supported in that. Now, going through all of that, and as I said, in the midst of that, after about my first two years in IBM, then coming to the U.S. on a work assignment, uh, you know, the, I began to learn even more in many ways about, you know, kind of being black in, um, uh, in a nation, being a, in a minority. I'm married to an African-American woman. I have African-American kids. Um, and so it then began to take on this other dimension of actually understanding the history that exists here within the U.S. And particularly on the family front, thinking about what that means and shapes for my kids and what I needed to learn and be aware of, what I need to be able to empathize with, you know, and just a whole bunch of dynamics. As I said, on the work front, generally speaking, I would say my experiences were, were overall pretty positive. I'm a pretty direct guy and what you see is what you get. And I never lost that. I never found, felt forced to lose that. And, um, but on the personal side, there was a lot of growth and learning as I really began to think about what this meant for, particularly as I think about my kids and the world in which they're growing. Bring us to present day and where I'd end is to say, you know, this year, in particular, and really the situation we find ourselves in as we talk about Black Lives Matter, as we see what's going on right now in the society here in the United States, that has brought a lot of 
different elements to the fore and actually driven, I would almost call a major confluence or clash of all of these dimensions of my life, you know, together. As I said, on the personal side, it's been raising my kids, right? It's been building our family. It's been being black in America. That's every day is what it is. Then on the work front, it's been a professional. It happened to be black. I'm doing my job and I lead a team. I run a of large organization, as it were, that's made up of people of all, you know, uh, hues, so shapes, backgrounds, whatever you want. But as you look at this situation we're in, the new dimension that came in where there were two kind of other factors that really I had to bring to the fore and readily embrace. One, as a black leader in IBM and providing a safe space and engaging with what I would call the black constituency or the black community within IBM, that what became another particular role because we needed to get together. People needed a safe place to kind of air and connect. And as a black leader, I have a very specific role in that regard. And then as a leader of a large organization, who is black, who is going through these experiences and who is trying to lead his organization and provide a way for everyone to engage and really think about how to be, you know, a positive force, if you like, in this um, transformation that needs to happen. You have a role there in how you communicate to your organization, how you create, you know, that environment and climate that allows people to come through and really help us all move forward, hopefully to create a better place. So that has been how my, uh, my journey has somewhat uh, played out as it were. There's a phrase uh, we've been using a lot and we talk about the black experience at IBM. And I think really for me, my focus has been thinking about what is that experience and how does it evolve in this, you know, driven by all that we are discussing? How does it get better? And so when you think about dimensions of getting better, you have to think about dimensions of representation. So are there enough of us? You have to think about dimensions of progressing. Are the ones that are coming in, making it through, do they feel they have got the right support? Do we have enough in place to guide those careers in that development? You have to think about pipeline. Have we reached back far enough? Are we going to the right places to bring people into the company to enjoy and help further enhance this experience? And so your actions begin, you know, to me that my focus and the actions are really around how you address that. You know, on the surface of it, as I said, I would argue, I don't think I'm a total minority in this, but my you know, experiences are not necessarily the same as everyone else. But I said, as I said, I feel I've had a rather supportive IBM career. So I've enjoyed access. I've enjoyed opportunity. How do we ensure that is broad based? How do we ensure many more say the same if they're not? Um, how do we amplify if they are right? Those are the things that I think become very important in the corporate world. The, the notion, the case for diversity is not, you know, it's not in my mind, something that should be debated. Diversity of background, diversity of race drives to diversity of thought, drives to, quite frankly, a better and richer environment for all, right? Uh, that, to my mind, that's not where we should be spending time. The challenge in front of us is the experience that is being had by various constituencies. In this particular case, and in my frame of reference, the Black constituency or the Black community. And it's an experience both within the workplace as in outside the workplace. And, you know, different dimensions on how each of those can be addressed, but they do, you know, kind of impact, right? Because what you experience outside, you know, you're driving along, you get stopped by the police or someone's following you in a grocery store. These are all conversations that we hear, you know, stories that people share, or you're even just worried about your kids growing up and how they're going to be perceived. You take that, that's every day in your personal life, and then you need to come into work and operate like none of that is happening. 
And that's not necessarily right. And that's something we have very strongly recognized in this notion of making sure that we're creating safe spaces for people to dialogue, for people to express what's happening with them. And I think the most important thing tied to that then is developing empathy. So that's my big thing. That's what I've been talking about broadly in my entire organization. We all have to learn how to develop empathy. I firmly believe it's a skill. I firmly believe it's something you can get better at doing because with empathy, you learn how to listen. You learn how to, that creates the, the way in which people can readily engage and share. You learn how not to make it, you know, about judging or just, you know, should I say neutralizing people's feelings, but just creating that safe space in which even things you don't understand and maybe never will, maybe never should, people feel free to engage. And I think when people feel free to engage, we can continue to focus quite simply on the, um, the things that matter in the corporate context, the mission, the job, the clients we need to serve, the software we need to produce, right? The, the work we have to do in our professional lives. You feel better supported when you can come into an environment, I feel, that has strong empathy as its base. So that's kind of what I'm hoping to see, or maybe not even hoping, working to kind of affect, right? What kind of environment? Because the right environment, I think, helps to then layer on all the other things that we obviously need to work on and that I already spoke about.